Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ryan Bijan, host of Cowtown Movie Classics, and welcome to the final installment in our October Monster Monday series. And we are closing out with one of the very best British supernatural thrillers based on a story by M.R. James and released in the United Kingdom as Night of the Demon. On this side of the pond, it's Curse of the Demon, so for all intents and purposes, it'll be Curse. We are welcoming back Cowtown Movie Classics fan favorite and prolific film historian, Mr. David DelVal. How are you doing tonight, David? I'm doing great, and I want to tell you this is my absolute, one of my favorite movies next to Edgar Ulmer's The Black Cat and James Whale's The Bride of Frankenstein. Jacques Tournier's Curse of the Demon, a.k.a. Night of the Demon, is an acknowledged classic of the supernatural, possibly one of the finest black magic films ever committed to film, uh, equaled only perhaps by Hammer's and Terry Fisher's The Devil Rides Out, a.k.a. Yeah. The Devil's, are always changing these titles, The Devil's Bride. Uh, Night of the Demon, as we will refer to it henceforth, is... M.R. James casting the rooms. Now you're about to see this and I don't want to give too much away, but this is a movie that is black and white in the truest sense of a magician's black and white. Julian Coswell is a cipher for the diabolist of the 40s and 30s, Aleister Crowley, the wickedest man who ever lived. And I'll talk more about Aleister Crowley, more about M.R. James, and certainly more about Jacques Tournier's classic film of the supernatural, The Night of the Demon. Remember, it's in the trees and pay close attention to the runic symbols that can bring forth a nightmare from the bowels of hell as we watch Dana Andrews discover the mystery of the Night of the Demon. I've seen this movie a dozen times. You're making me want to watch it even more. So I've you, seen it countless times and yeah. I'll watch it many more. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. If you're in the audience, please stick around after the film so you can hear the rest of our conversation with David DelLau. Without further ado, from 1957, starring Dana Andrews, Peggy Cummins, and Niall McGuinness, Jacques Tourneur's, or Jacques Tourneur's Night of the Demon. Wow, that's a powerful film very powerful film with a great ending and uh, one of the things i want to talk about with curse of the demon right off the bat is that in 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 circles in film historian circles the big controversy as they say in england about the movie was hal chester the producer's insistence on having a fire demon which i think and bill everson agreed with me and one of my favorite critics who was my mentor william k everson he thought the fire demon was effective and that it worked. And I agree, but I do understand where the director Jacques Tournier was coming from because he's the director of a, three of fabulous uh, Val Luton films, including Cat People, I Walked With a Zombie, very, very subtle kind of esoteric uh, meditations on, on horror, if we can. And he hated the word horror as Karloff did. He was more of the supernatural, but, in Cat People, we never really see Arena transform. It's shadows on the wall. And that's a very, mar that's a mar in fact, in Bad and the Beautiful, Kirk Douglas is doing a kind of Val Luton because he does a Cat People thing where he said, you don't want to see the zippers on the back of the costume, so let's just do shadows. So Tournier was all about, let's imply. And the only sequence in Curse of the Demon that Jacques actually directed that was a, a demonic uh, kind of thing. When Dana Andrews goes through the forest and you see the fireball, Tournier directed that, but he did not direct the sequences where you see the fire demon. He only wanted like four frames of the demon to show up at the end of the train where Coswell is picked up and, and dropped. But now let's talk a little bit about Niall McGuinness's performance as Julian Coswell. Brilliant. This is an actor who had been in Luther on Broadway uh, and he plays it with what my friend Tony Henshaw calls a uh, Celtic whimsy. And I love that expression because, you know, he says, well, you know, I, you know, the game snakes and ladders. I much prefer sliding down the snake than climbing the ladders. You should know what that means. And of course, we cannot go any further than to talk about his mother, Mrs. Coswell, played by the divine Alethine uh, Sewell, who 
lived to be 101 years old. She's in a great episode of The Avengers about killer plants, one of the black and white episodes. But in this, she plays his mother. And she's saying, Julian, if this, if you don't like this, give it up. Mother, we can't give it up. All that we possess here is because my is based through fear. My, my followers fear me. Now, there were 13 minutes cut out of this that were restored. So we've lost nothing. And I don't mind the fire demon. So I am of the critics to say, Curse of the Demon, Night of the Demon, is possibly one of the 10 greatest horror films, one of the greatest of the British horror films ever made. Uh, never equal. And it's interesting because the BBC did another version of Casting the Runes, which I went to great lengths to find. TV movie, well done, but hardly on a level of this. The reason this is so good is because Charles Bennett, who wrote the script, was a Hitchcock writer. He wrote The Man Who Knew Too Much. He was brilliant. And he took the basic storyline of M.R. James and, and embellished it because all the relationship with the mother is right out of Notorious, where uh, yeah. Ingrid Bergman goes to South America only to be co confronted with the dragon lady, Madame, I've forgotten her name, but she was wonderful. She and Claude Rains and all the scenes between the mother and Claude Rains just border on the incestuous. It's so wicked and perverse. And of course, Strangers on a Train. Hitchcock loved to have these kind of homosexual implications, coded gay, of Mama's Boys. The most notorious being Strangers on a Train, uh, notorious being notorious. Uh, Jesse Royce Landy's playing Cary Grant's mother in North by Northwest is hilarious because she's two years younger than her son. Never mind. Uh, that's common in movies. Lauren Green plays Ava Gardner's mother, and she's older than he is in Earthquake. But, uh, you know, I love it. When it's, it. Age is just a number, and more so, no, no more so than in Hollywood itself. But I do want to mention my friend Tony Hernshaw's book, Beating the Devil. This is the definitive study of Night of the Demon. It's absolutely essential. It should be in every horror film lover's bookcase because it's fabulous also this wonderful it's it's not it's probably one of the few books on jacques career uh and it's called very it, the cinema of nightfall i love that because it is the velvet darkness in which jacques envelops us in this movie there's so many wonderful moments mr miss mr meek you know and of course cherry bright i did you know all all the the seance is just a, a master class in humor, black humor, and also now that it's been restored, you know, the mother tries to save her son. And there's a scene in the book that should have been in the movie where Coswell, who of course is, is uh, what is it, Professor Bobo, well, it wouldn't be very good if I conjured up a demon from hell for these children. Well, he'd love to do that. And in the book, Coswell has a lantern puppet show for the children where he shows them a bit of hell and they all come screaming out of the tent and the mothers and fathers going, what's wrong with my children? And, he, and it's, that's missing. Uh, but you know, there was just so much to include. And of course, the one problem with the movie from the, the filmmaker's point of view was Hal Chester, who was the producer. They regret forever that they hired this guy because you know he kept trying to jazz it up a little. Remember it's 1957, it's a year before the horror of Dracula, kind of galvanized the horror film in Europe with Hammer. Uh, Hammer had already done by the time this movie came out, they had done Curse of the Frankenstein and Curse of the Demon in America played on a double bill with Revenge of Frankenstein, which is a fabulous movie. Yeah. What a double bill. And I saw that as a kid. And if that didn't turn me into a die hard, because I saw these things in the theater. And I remember I took my mother to see Curse of the Demon and we're standing out to get the tickets and my mother looks at me and she said, I'm only seeing this because I love Dana Andrews. I'm a big Dana Andrews fan, but you're going to be disappointed because this isn't a horror film because Dana Andrews doesn't make horror films. Uh -oh. So my mother went in there, even with the posters showing a big fire demon, you know, no, 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 no. Dana Andrews doesn't make horror films. It's so funny. And my mother was so odd with that. But in any case, uh, Dana Andrews was a wonderful guy. I met him at, uh, I was taking Joyce Jameson to a CBS thing called Tribute for Jack Lemmon. He had done a movie called Tribute. And Dana Andrews was there to celebrate. 
and uh, I connected with him and I said, please do this interview with me. And uh, he said, come to my house. You you deserve it. If you, you've you given so much love and you know, so I just feel, I have to tell you, Ryan, this movie, even though it wasn't made for me and I was six years old when it came out or seven, um, you know, I feel like it's my movie in an odd way. Like I feel the black cat is my movie in a way because I've been watching it since I was a little kid. And now I'm in my 70s and I'm still watching it. Isn't that extraordinary? And uh, I, I don't know if you want to ask me anything specific. I just don't know what to tell you. I just know so much about this movie and I love it so much. And I just think it's a perfect movie in so many ways. Yeah, well, you brought up Dana Andrews. I think it's kind of interesting at that period in the 1950s in the United Kingdom, there was a trend on some of these lower budget genre films, noir crime movies, horror films, science fiction, you name it, of getting, you know, these would be lower budget British films, but they would, it, the American studios would loan out an A-list actor or a Hollywood star who is maybe a little bit past their prime. You know, the one that comes to mind, I think of Brian Donlevy in the Quatermass experiment, right? Well, no kidding, or, De or Dean Jagger. Now, yeah. Dean Jagger's name is gonna get a lot of people in those seats, right? Don't be silly. Yeah. But no, yeah. but they did that, Robert Hutton. I yeah. did a commentary on a movie called They Came From Outer Space with Michael Goff and some kind of purple cocktail number playing the King of Mars, which is why I wanted to watch because I love Michael yeah. Goff. But Robert Hutton is a name? No, no, not really. But yeah. no, the secret though with this movie, Dana Andrews had just done a film called Canyon Passage with Jacques Tournier. They were very close. Oh my God, they were buying each other's houses. They were very close friends. So I don't think... Yeah, he would have had, but he had Peggy Cummings. She was English. Peggy Cummings, of course, everyone knows yep. from Gun Crazy. So this was a part for her. But Dana's big problem was he was a very, very serious alcoholic. Hmm. His drinking, it didn't interfere from what I gather with his movies. However, there is a moment in this film when Dana's getting out of the car with, with Peggy Cummings back at his hotel. He's completely shit-faced. And he slurs his words. And Jacques just uh, edited it so it worked. But you could tell he was drunk. And uh, But he never drank while they were filming, mm -hmm. like Monty Clift or some of these. Uh, but Dana was a sober guy. by the And it's so funny because I had met him right at, well, after he had done airport. You know, the airport, the famous airport where he's the reason the plane is in trouble because he has a heart attack in his little plane. That's Dana Andrews. Yeah. So, but Dana was a huge star in the 40s. He did Otto Preminger's Lara, and he did Where the Sidewalk Ends for Fritz Lang. I mean, he's Fritz Lang. I mean, he's worked for all the great directors. And uh, he was in some very fine, for the best years of our lives, you know. He's A1, you know, a, a kind of dramatic actor. Very much, more so than Cornell Wilde. Yeah. And I knew both of them. And uh, his sobriety was just uh, marvelous. And uh, he, he added 10 years to his life. But like a lot of reformed alcoholics, you know, he always, you know, he did all he could to make people aware that this was a disease. This isn't something like, oh, I'm just going to get drunk and destroy my career. I mean, I did a whole thing. I mean, I knew Lawrence Tierney very well. And his drinking was even worse than Dana's. Um, but, you know, it's it's very interesting because Dana told me so many stories. But the, my favorite moment was, oh, and have I shown the, the fire demon yet? No, Robert, no, Robert Skotak made this for me. Here is the fire demon. An actual, it's a cutout of the actual demon, which is taken from a 3,700-year-old woodcut. So mm -hmm. all of the images of the demon in Night of the Demon are authentic. Uh, renditions of what through the ages alchemists and demonologists have assumed these creatures would look like and it's got like it looks a little oddly enough like Disney's drawings of the the monster in Forbidden Planet yeah a little bit and I think Jeepers Creepers borrowed a little bit from this too but well, I can see some Robert Skotak who won an Oscar for like Star Wars with his brother Dennis Dennis and, and Robert Skotak made this for me and he's a huge fan of this as were you know Ter quentin tarantino feels the same way about this movie i most people do i i think you will very rarely find someone in 
in the genre that doesn't admire Night of the Demon. And, you know, we're in a, a phase now where I would love to see more supernatural stories and less movies about paranormal activity, found footage. Please, I'm so bored with it. Well, you know what? Even a lot of ways, if you, uh, if you ever saw Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell, in a lot of ways, that is sort of an unofficial remake of Curse of I know. But you know what the problem is with Drag Me to Hell? There's animal, there's an animal cruelty thing in that I don't like. Oh, okay. It's been she's a while. Asked, okay. She's asked to kill a puppy. Yeah. It's one of the same, but no, it is. But you know, anything involving, uh, it's very Faustian in a way, the ruinic symbols. But uh, uh, there's so much in the movie that's so Hitchcockian. And I think that's what really makes the film work. For example, when he goes to Charles Lloyd Pack, who plays the chemist, please look at this card. Can you tell me if there, and there's nothing on it. Now, when they put the, there's a beautiful arrow release of Curse of the Demon where they reprinted those cards. They had put, that, yeah. It's fabulous. You know, I want a Julian Coswell, uh, you know, introduction card as they call them in England. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's a great film, and everyone in it is great. Liam Redmond, who plays the other professor, was in The Ghost and Mr. Chicken with Don Knotts. Yeah. So every time I see The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, I see this reference to this British classic horror film. And, of course, The Ghost and Mr. Chicken is a classic, too, in many ways, you know. Of course, before we close out, uh, one, uh, one person I would like to give a shout-out to is the director, Jacques Tournier. It, just because, as you mentioned, he came up through the ranks as a disciple of Val Luton. He directed some of the greatest films attributed to Luton as a producer. Uh, when, I, when we had Steve Haberman on a couple of weeks ago, I asked Steve, I said, okay, how much of the Val Luton house style was the, the vision of Val Luton himself, or was it these really talented directors like Jacques Tournier and Robert Wise that he was working with? Now, Steve Haberman gives 100% of the credit to Val Luton. What do you think? I mean, to me, Curse of the Demon. Well, no, you never give 100% of credit yeah. to anybody because I was an agent. You just don't do that. Yeah. Number two, think about the other two directors that worked for Val Luton, Mark Robeson and Robert Wise. Yeah. Both had bigger careers. Bob did uh, West Side Story, yeah. uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still, and the gargantuan, hideous movie of all the movie everyone loves that i know is a mistake from start to finish is the sound of music yeah julie andrews take a nap it's and the the, the spider on the valentine and that is chris Plummer. but i get into that but my point is J jacques Tournier did out of the past canyon passage night of the demon a lot of classic movies that are on the same level with Robert Wise and certainly Mark Robes and Peyton plays, really. Yeah. So but they had bigger careers. I don't understand why Tournier didn't have a bigger career. Yeah. Making more blockbusters like Robert Wise and, and Mark Robes, Robeson. So, no, I think Val Luton might have been, a, a, well, no, no, no. I mean, it's hard to say, but I don't think 100%. No, I think that's, that's kind of uh, giving, I don't think that gives Jacques enough credit because he brought to Luton a lot of his cachet as opposed to the other way around. Yeah. Uh, Robert Wise was a cutter, was a film editor. Uh, he edited Citizen Kane. He also edited much to whatever you want to say. And I was right in the office with Robert Wise when we were talking about Magnificent Ambersons, but that's another story because Wells is a whole other story. But no, I think that Jacques should have had a bigger career. He should have more A-list movies like Wise. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. But, uh, and it's sad because Jacques wound up, his last movie was for American International Pictures called War Gods of the Deep, which was City in the Sea with Vincent Price and Tab Hunter. Yeah. I said Vincent Price and Tab Hunter. Think about that. But in any case, uh, <laughs> that was Jacques' last movie, and it was a mess. And it was a mess because of the same problem Jacques had with Hal Lester on Night of the Demon. Only this was uh, AIP, and it was Lewis Hayward, D.K. Hayward, who, you know, I like Deke, but Deke was not a very good producer and he wasn't all that brilliant about ideas. And, you know, he was always 
pushing his way into movies and adding rather adding vulgarities, as Vincent would say. Um, so Jacques' last movie was not that memorable, nor was Comedy of Terrors with another AIP. AIP picked up Jacques. Uh, you don't see Robert Wise at AIP. Yeah. You don't see Mark Robeson at AIP. So, you know, I don't know. Well, I'm going to talk to Steve because Steve's a good friend of mine. And um, we we do. We've never done a commentary together, but we might one day. Uh, but yeah, no, I 100 percent. No, I wouldn't say that. You know, that's my opinion. Well, well, that's good to know, because I think the evidence in the films that he directed post Luton, I think the evidence speaks for itself. Uh, David Delval, do you have any closing thoughts on Curse of the Demon or Night of the Demon? Well, I wish if it were to be remade, it would be remade by someone who loves Gothic literature enough to let the story come through. And if you can embellish it, you know, but instead of remaking it, let me, here's my final thought. Everybody out there that's making indie movies, that's making movies, please don't write your own scripts. Stop it. Don't, your original ideas, no, 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 no. They're probably not original, you just didn't think. But there's a, a wealth of public domain gothic horrors that would make marvelous movies by people like Algernon Blackwood, M.R. James, Henry James, uh, the Arkham House, Argus Derelith, H.P. Lovecraft, Arthur Macon, there's just Lady Cynthia Asquith. There is just an abundance of wonderful material. Stop remaking Dracula. Stop remaking Frankenstein. Stop, stop, stop with the zombies, please. Let's become more original because this movie is a testament to imagination and fine filmmaking. And I want to see that come back. That's my thoughts for the end. Absolutely. Well, David Delval, again, once again, thank you so much for your time. We always have a good time hearing from you. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. And if you're in the audience, I hope you enjoyed the film. Once again, my name is Ryan Bijan. I hope you all have a very safe and happy Halloween.